Amen. Amen. Good morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. It's one what a beautiful service we are having thus far. Praise God for His Holy Spirit and for His leadership so far. Yes. Let us pray. Yes. God, we love you this morning. God, we adore you. We worship you. God, we pray that you will open our hearts and our minds as we feast on your word. Yes. Bless your word to our ears and help us, Lord, to be doers of your word. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. This morning, I want to speak to you on a subject that affects all Christians. Something that we all struggle with. Some more than others. And some, it can be very devastating depending on the issues that they are facing. That is worry. The Bible has a lot to say about worry, particularly our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We all worry. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. If we are honest with ourselves, we all worry. We worry about our jobs. We worry about our children. We worry about our finances. We worry about our health. Young people worry about college education. Sometimes they worry about their parents. Our older ones, once we have reached 50, we worry about getting old. We worry about our future and how we are going to retire. Isn't that true? But what does Jesus say about worry? He is our mighty counselor. Amen. He is the Prince of Peace. The mighty God. Amen. Amen. So how do we deal with this struggle that all of us face daily? This morning, we will look at this from the perspective of Jesus. Amen. 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 Our Savior teaches us three things about worry. Number one, do not worry about your life. Easier said than done, huh? True. If you're dead, no with cancer. And here the Lord is telling you, do not worry about your life. Two, God will provide for all our needs. Yeah. Thirdly, learn to have faith in God. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 25a, Therefore, do not be anxious about your life. You notice the first thing our Savior deals with surrounds our livelihood. The eating, the drinking, the wearing of clothing. You see, worry is a destroyer. Worry can destroy your life. It can destroy your relationship. It can make you into a very miserable person. But most importantly, worry can destroy our walk with the Lord. Yes. Look at how Jesus deals with this struggle. First thing, do not worry about your life. What is it about your life this morning that you're anxious about? Is it your health? Your job? Not enough money? Jesus is saying, my dear friends, my children, do not be nervous, uneasily frightened, fretful, restless, or apprehensive about your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us talk about life for a moment. The Bible tells us that we're not supposed to worry about our life. What we eat, what we drink, about our body, what it looks like. In the first century, not having enough to eat was an issue for common people. Presently, in our nation of plenty, we still have people who suffer from a lack of food. Sometimes it is their fault, it's fault of their parents, 
circumstances, economic conditions. But in other cases, it is just that people are in bad situation and need help. Those of us who have plenty to eat, still worry about your food. I can't eat that. It has too many calories. Eggs are good for you. Then they tell you eggs are not good for you. Red meat gives heart disease, fast food, and the list goes on and on. Whether we have little or whether we have plenty, we still worry about our food. Yeah. Isn't that true? Yeah. How blessed we are when we can get up in the morning and say, what will I cook today? <laughs> That's a blessing. Yes. Do you know how many people don't have a choice? They have to eat what they have. Yes. But many of us are so blessed we can decide, what should I cook today? When the Lord provides for us, we ought to bless and eat. Amen. 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 Jesus says, do not worry about your body. Today, our people are obsessed with body image. We are caught, get caught up in fat diets, exercise programs, mm? and they only last until we crave for the food that we miss. Jesus said to us this morning, do not worry about fashion. True. Now, in the past, many people went to school wearing one shirt and one pants. You know that? Sometimes one underwear for a whole week. Some barefoot. You know what I mean? Talking about barefoot. In the Eastern Caribbean, and in the Barbados and Antigua, in the past, people go to church barefoot. And when they reach to the door, they put on the shoe. When church finish, they take off the shoe and walk home barefoot. They had one pair of shoes in the summer. We nowadays, we have a closet full of shoes. Hmm? Today, we have an abundance of clothing. And we still worry what we are to wear. Does this outfit make me look fat? Am I in style? Does this match? What is wrong anyway? What is wrong with being in fashion? You tell me. What is wrong with being conscious of our image to the public? Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Does abundant living have to do with the latest fashion or fad? But before you answer, listen carefully what the Bible says. Christians are called to be different. Amen. 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 We are called to be different from the world. Yes. Sometimes people try to make the Bible fit into their lifestyle instead of their lifestyle fitting into the Word of God. 2 Corinthians 6 17. Let me remind you, I know I'm quoting a lot of scripture this morning because all that I say must be supported by scripture. 2 Corinthians 6 17. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate. Amen. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. End of quote. What Jesus is telling us concerning our fad and our fashion is don't let the flesh be more important than the spirit. Amen. 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 The abundant life that Jesus wants us to live is not about fashion. It's not about nice and expensive clothing or eating particular food. When Christ was on earth, he was not a vegetarian. <laughs> he ate everything. Actually, he was even called a wine bibber. He drank. The abundant life is a life that is filled with the fullness of God. Amen. Fullness on earth, fullness in heaven. Amen. Fullness right now, and fullness later. Amen. Amen. It is the life of blessing. Amen. Blessed in the field, blessed in the house. Blessed going out, blessed coming in. Hallelujah. 
He did not just not come to give us eternal life. He wants us to live an abundant life. Yes. Amen? He wants us to be filled with the glory of God. A life that, is, that walks with Him daily. A life that talks with Him daily. A life that says, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. An abundant life is a life that is liberated. It is a liberated life. John 8, 3, 8, 26 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen? Amen. The problem with many Christians today is that they are still walking around in bondage. We are not experiencing the abundant life because we are not liberated. We aren't set free. We have not laid down our burdens. Amen? Amen? We struggle with our fears and hence we worry and we become anxious. Still, concerning our life. Do you know where Christ started to, 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 to deal with our, with life, our livelihood? Because how we live, we have to give an account for. Amen. And all that we have in this world, it's not our clothing, not our shoes, but what we eat is how we live. Yes, amen. It's how we live that will determine how we spend eternity. Amen. Not only now, but in the future. Jesus said, do not worry about your future. Matthew 6, 27 says, who can add a single hour to his life? Many of us are worried about what will happen to us in the future. Hmm. We are afraid of aging. That true? Yeah. Some of us, older people, blessed are those who have attained the age of 50. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Some of us are further down the train than others. We panic. When we see more wrinkles and gray hair, <laughs> accept who you are. Yeah. Grow old gracefully and give God thanks for who you are. Enjoy your youth, young people. Right. But when you become old, live life to the fullest. Yes. Don't be stressed about getting old. It's part of living. Right. Some of us are worried about what's going on in the world, in society, in our family. Listen, if a war breaks out between America and North Korea. Don't be worried. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen? Amen. God is still in control. Amen. So don't worry about your future. The Bible emphasizes this command about worrying about future. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every single thing, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God.